last video I said this video was going to be about how the map works and a walkthrough on how to build a SNES ROM file in 64 TAS. Sadly, this turned into a 10 page monster, so I'm splitting it into two videos. Video 4 will now have the how to assemble a ROM. In this video, I'm going to introduce how the SNES sees the cart memory and its own memory, and then explain how the emulator file holds the cart memory. The SNES has two main mappings, low ROM and high ROM. Although these are blanket terms and don't actually accurately describe the mappings fully. Broadly, low ROM gives you 32k banks of ROM data in each of its banks, while high ROM gives you 64k banks of ROM data in some banks and upper 32k in others. Surprisingly, both layouts give you up to 4 megabytes of cart data. While the 65816 has a 16 megabyte address space, the 4 megabyte limit is due to a lot of mirroring. First thing, that is universal. The 128K of WRAM is located in banks 7E and 7F. This never changes. Let's look at low ROM. It's important to understand mirroring. Mirroring is where one memory location logically connects to another point i.e. you look at a mirror, but you don't see the mirror, but you see what it reflects. For the first 6465816 banks, i.e. how the 65816 divides its address space, the lower 32k of a bank is mirrored across all of them, and then the lower 8k of all of them mirrors to the first 8k of WRAM, i.e. writing to 000000, is the same as writing to 7E000, which is the same as 08000 or 3F000. Thus, the lower 8K of RAM is mirrored. Above RAM, we have the system registers, the 5A22 registers, the PPU registers, DMA registers, Joypad, APU, etc. So again, writing to 002100, writes to the PPU register 2100, and 102100, same thing, all the way through to 3F. While the lower 32K are identical, the upper 32K can be unique. Let me explain. Each upper 32K points to part of your ROM. So bank 0 points to the first 32K, 1 the next 32K, 02 the next, etc until you run out of ROM. If you only have 128K cart, then that is four times 32K. So banks zero, one, two, and three hold unique data. When you get to bank four, however, it is now the same as what was in bank zero. 256K cart and the first eight are unique. 512, the first 16, and so on, all the way up to four megabytes, where every bank's upper 32K is unique. Note the color bars are not quite to scale. This only holds true for the power of two steppings. If you have three megabytes, then the last one megabyte will repeat to fill up to four megabytes, then it repeats. Mostly, you can split the ROMs on smaller sizes and set them up with the first half mirroring a couple of times, and then the second ROM starts and mirrors, and then that mirrors. It depends on how you put your ROMs on your board. Banks 40 to 6F only have the upper 32K of cart ROM and have nothing in the lower 32K. Although this is not strictly true, it can have nothing or it can have the same thing as the upper 32K. Depends on how the cart is wired. The cart ROM is a mirror of the lower 64 banks, i.e. 40, 8000 is the same as 008000, and 418000 is the same as 018000. Banks 70 to 7D put any cart SRAM in the lower 32K. If you have none, then it's empty. The upper 32K is unmapped, or may show the SRAM repeated. The more astute viewer may have noticed it only goes up to D, which is 14 banks, 
worth. And 14 times 32 equals 448k. If you want 512, you can get the remaining two 32k banks in FE and FF, as WRAM only exists in 70 and 7F. Now banks 80 to FD mirror banks 0 to 7D 100% the same. Only if you have fast ROM and you have the weight bit set, when you are in a bank greater than 80, you will read and access data at 3.58 MHz. And when you are below 80, you will access at 2.68 MHz. If you don't have the bit enabled, then above 80 will be 100% the same and 2.68 MHz. Now this seems like a large waste. Why repeat everything everywhere? Well, convenience. And compatibility between low and high ROM maps. Want to access registers from within your code? You can set the data bank to a bank that has your code and the registers. The 4026F area seems a complete waste in this case, but it is for high ROM. You might be panicked about how small this makes the ROM. Only 4 megabytes. Oh no. But 4 megabytes is massive on a SNES. Only two commercial titles had more than 4 megabytes. Tales of Fantasia, which has a fully sung intro song, as well as being a massive RPG, and Star Ocean, which also is a massive RPG with a very long spoken intro. Chrono Trigger is 4 megabytes. FF6, 3 megabytes. Secret of Mana, 2 megabytes. Mega Man X, 1.5 megabytes. Super Pro Protector, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, and Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, 1 megabyte. Super Mario World is 512k. Basically, it's not a problem. And in the years it would take you to make enough content to go over 4 megabytes, you will know enough about the SNES to understand X low ROM, which gets you to 6 megabytes. Now, high ROM. I'm only going to discuss the differences to low ROM. The main point of high ROM is it gives you 64k of code, not 32k. So this is where banks 40 and all the way through to 7D come into effect. Now the entire 64k is banked in with ROM. So 40 has the first 64k of ROM, 41 has the next 64k of ROM, and so on. And it repeats as you would expect. So 00 to 3F are now as they were in low ROM. You have the upper 32k of ROM, and then the registers and shared RAM as before. Only now you get the upper 32k as if it was a 64k bank. So bank 00 has the second 32k, then you skip 32k, and bank 01 has the fourth 32k, and then you skip 32k, and 02 has the sixth, i.e. the lower half of the bank is swapped with the mirrors. What happened to SRAM? From banks 20 to 3F, SRAM now appears at 6000 to 7FFF. So you get 8K mapped per bank. So bank 20 has the first 8K of SRAM, 21 has the next 8K, and so on. This of course repeats as you would expect. This limits you to 256K of SRAM. And then FE and FF are no longer SRAM, but just the upper 128k of ROM, as per banks 3E and 3F. Why high ROM? Sometimes splitting into 32k blocks is painful. Large data sets such as large maps, lots of animations, 64k can be nice. You can set the data bank to the lower banks, so it has registered shared memory and it can see the upper 32k. So if you put all your data in the upper half and make it grow down, and then you can put your code in the lower half and make it grow up from the bottom. This gives you up to 32K of data and then 32K or more of code in a single bank. But it does need you to understand the 65816 and keep track of the program bank and the data bank and worry about if the data is above the 32K bank line, etc. Not a big issue or hard, but for starting out and getting up to speed, the SNES, start with low ROM, and switch if you want to, and are more comfortable with the SNES. Another point is this mapping is not actually correct. There is no correct mapping. It all depends on the exact board, and the exact size and combination of ROM chips and RAM chips you have. So basically, 
Don't get cute and don't rely on mirroring beyond the basic what is at 0 is also at 40 and 80 and CO and 01 is at 4181C1. Just stick to that mentality and ignore any other possible mirrors as each emulator may do it differently. And with SRAM, most people will be using a flash cart which may have too much RAM on board for your exact setup, so don't count on repeat mirrors for it either. Keep it straight and narrow. That is how the SNES sees it, but not how the ROM file sees it. You don't want to put in gaps where there is no ROM, you just want the ROM. Historically, there are multiple file formats. SMC is from the Super Magicom copier. SWC is from the Super Wildcard copier. There is also FIG. P80 or P70, P78, I think it was. Something like that. And then you had the .1.2.3.4 ROM dump files. And then as the copier wars took off, they would try and make their files incompatible by interleaving them and it was a mess. There is also the case of headed and not headed ROM, which is not to be confused with the SNES header, which is in the ROM. In this modern age, where we don't have to put things on floppy disks and download over a 14.4k board modem, we should just use SFC. The SFC is just a linear map of ROM chunk after ROM chunk. So low ROM. First 32k of ROM as it shows at 0080000 and 808000, followed by the next 32k of ROM as it shows at 018000 and 818000, followed by the next 32k of ROM, and the next and the next and the next until done. High ROM. The first 64k of ROM as it is shown as 40000 or C000, followed by the next 64k of ROM from 41000, and then the next 64k until done. I mentioned the SNES internal header. What is it? Well, it starts at 00FFBO in SNES address space. It has two parts, the ROM registration data and the specifics. The first two bytes are the maker code. You can put whatever you want. Then four bytes of game code. Again, this is a tag. It doesn't matter. Then seven bytes of zero for some reason. Then the expansion RAM size. This is for expansion chips, so normally zero. Special version, zero. Cartridge type, zero. Now we get into the specifications. It starts with 21 bytes of the game's name in 7-bit ASCII. This is nice to set up as some front-end schedule will scan the headers to display game names, etc. This needs to be exactly 21 bytes and empty space should be filled with space. Then comes the mapping byte. This tells the emulator mostly what mode and expansion chips you want. For you at the moment, $20 is low ROM, $21 is high ROM, $30 is fast low ROM, and $31 is fast high ROM. This is followed by the ROM type. 0 is ROM only, 1 is ROM plus RAM, 2 is ROM plus RAM plus battery. The upper nibble describes which, if any, expansion chips you have. Next is ROM size. This is sized in log base 2 of the ROM size in kilobytes. Yeah. For those of you who no longer remember, to convert log bases, you do log size divided by log 2. 128k is 7, 256k is 8, 512k is 9, 1 meg is 10, 2 meg is 11, 4 meg is 12, you've probably seen the pattern. Next is the SRAM size, same as the ROM size. 0 is no SRAM, 8k is 3, 16k is 4, 32k is 5, 64k is 6. Next is the destination code. For NTSC detection, use 0 or 1. For PAL, use 2. Although you may want to use your native country's code, if you wish. The next field is the header version, and this should be $33. Now we have the CRC and complement check. These only matter to Nintendo to test and make sure two ROM sets match and that their mass ROMs match the proof set. So just hit both of these to 0000. At this point, we are now at FFEO, which is the start of the 65816 vectors. 
That is all for this video. Next video, I will walk through setting up 64TAS to build a low ROM file from scratch.